Morning. It's Monday, December 14th, and Operation Warp Speed is underway. Yesterday, they started sending the vaccine out to the distribution centers. They're using FedEx for the western half of this country and UPS for the eastern half of this country. This was a monumental task, and everybody is amazed that we completed it in under a year. But this is only the tip of the iceberg, people. Now we have to get this into the hands of the people. We have to get people vaccinated. And just to indicate the magnitude of this, from the FedEx hubs and the UPS hubs, the vaccine will go to 636 locations nationwide. Now, these locations, these distribution centers, were identified by the states and the territories. They expect 145 sites across the country to receive the vaccines today, Monday. Another 425 sites will receive it on Tuesday, and the final 66 on Wednesday. And that will complete the initial delivery of the Pfizer orders. So we, we, I say we, I, I mean a national we, right? Now the big deal is going to make sure that everybody who can be vaccinated is vaccinated. I haven't seen any lists because the states are all different. They all have different views on who's essential and who's not essential and uh, who should get the vaccine first or last. But they're planning to vaccinate anybody that's over 16. In what sequence? I'm not sure. Because every state is going to have a different sequence. Most of them, I'm sure, will start with essential workers, health care, and... Uh, People related to healthcare, EMTs, people on the fringes of healthcare. Then they will probably go to the nursing homes, to the rehab centers, and to the population that is most vulnerable. And that depends on who decides, makes that decision. You could be over 80 or it could be over 75. I have no idea what they're going to decide on who's the most vulnerable population. So, but in any event, the thing is underway. And what I am concerned about is the segment of this population that, for whatever reason, does not want to be vaccinated. And we as a nation cannot allow that. There should be no option for non-vaccination, except in cases where the person can prove that they are too sick to take this vaccination, that the vaccine itself could kill them. I don't know if that's possible. But it's highly probable. What do we do with the population that doesn't want to take the vaccine? They're afraid. They're not sure. They don't believe that anything could happen this quickly and be perfect. And we know it's not going to be perfect. There will be some glitches and there will be some situations that we did not expect. In the best of the trials, 95% is what they reached. 95% efficacy. So there was still 5% of the people that could possibly have an adverse reaction to the vaccine, or maybe they it won't be effective in their cases. But 95% of the people is a lot better than we're doing right now. So in my mind, there is no excuse not to take the vaccine. And if you don't want to take the vaccine, then strict measures should be set up for you. You should be put in isolation somewhere. Go home and stay there. Don't leave the house. Maybe we even put one of those electronic monitoring systems on you so that you can't escape. Because it's important that everybody in this country contributes an effort to beating COVID-19. Everybody needs to work toward that goal. There can be no excuses. I'll tell you a little story. I talked to my sister-in-law on the phone the other day. She sounded awful. She said she had a cold. Two days later, I talked to her. She's feeling much better, but she had COVID. You know how she got COVID? 
She had a hip replacement. She went to a rehab center. She got COVID in the rehab center, right? That's how dangerous this thing is. And on top of that, her son got COVID too because he visited his mom in the rehab center. So think about that. They're both doing fine, and that's wonderful. But there are a lot of people who are not going to be doing fine, and they're going to be put in situations, and they're going to come in contact with COVID, and they don't even realize it, and they expect they're safe, and they're going to be walking around infecting other people. So this is not a joke. This is a serious business. This is really war. And in this case, we're not sending anybody out to fight. We're not dressing you up in uniforms and sending you out to the battlefield. The battlefield is the United States of America. And if you look across this country, you can see that every state was its own little battlefield. And some fought the battle much better than others. I just read that North Dakota just became the 35th state to mandate masking. Well, what took them so long? And what about the other 15 states that don't have a masking rule? So if we have states that are ignoring the safety of their people. Then the people have to stand up and take care of themselves and ignore what the states are telling you. Wear your mask and get vaccinated. This is your opportunity for freedom. Get vaccinated. Don't be afraid. I don't know what else I can say about this. We should be congratulating ourselves, giving ourselves a big pat on the back because we were eight actually able to accomplish Operation Warp Speed. But it will have been a waste of time if we don't have near 100% cooperation now from the people who need to take these vaccines. And we cannot fail in this. This is not a war that we want to lose. Because if we lose at this point, it will be years and years and years of agony. And every one of us will be wandering around saying, oh, shit, why didn't I do that? Why didn't they do that? We don't want to have that. Everybody has to get vaccinated. Everybody has to keep wearing their masks. The beginning of the end may have arrived. So that's all I have for this morning, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.